one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now be moving on to the approval of the agenda for tonight. Are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none. Call for a motion to approve. Uh, call for a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Make I'll a motion to approve. And all second. Secretary, please do a roll call. Vote. Chair Fisher. Yes. Vice Chair Harlan. Aye. Commissioner Ruman. Aye. Commissioner Wojcik. Aye. Commissioner LaPaglia. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we will take public comments. Any person may address the Planning Commission on any subject pertaining to city business, which does not relate to any item listed on the agenda or the consent calendar. Normally, no action may be considered or taken by the Planning Commission on any matter not listed on the agenda. If there are speakers, they are limited to a three-minute time frame. Madam Secretary, do we have any non-agenda public comments? Thank you, Chair. We do not have public comments. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We're now moving on to the public hearing. But first, we're going to approve the minutes of December 13th, 2023 and January 10th of 2024 of the regular Planning Commission meetings as presented. Madam Secretary, are, 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 oh, if we can get a, a motion and a second to approve the minutes. We need a motion. Okay, I'll, I'll move approval. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second, Madam Secretary. Please do a roll call vote, please. Chair Fisher. Yes. Vice Chair Harlan. Aye. Commissioner Vrooman. Aye. Commissioner Wojcik. Aye. Commissioner LaPaglia. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, let's move on to the public hearing. And for that, I will turn it over to our planning department, uh, and I believe who's giving the presentation? Uh, tonight we have an associate planner, Farah Bulkin, with the presentation. Farah, welcome. Thank, Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. The project before you um, is a 5.24 acre uh, project site. Um, it is located south of Sierra Lane, east of Mitchell Road, and north of Clinton Keith Road. Uh, the proposal before you consists of a tentative parcel map to subdivide this one legal lot into three parcels. Additionally, a development plan proposal um, is included with this development to, to do the construction for the retail developments on parcels one and two. A phasing plan application is also included in this project proposal, um, which consists of construction phasing for phases one and two. And the conditional use permits included uh, with this project covers the beer and wine sales for the convenience store, as well as the car wash use for, the, for parcel one. Can I pause you there, please? Uh, are there any members of the Planning Commission that wish to abstain or recuse themselves from this item? Seeing none, thank you, Ms. Farah. Of course. The project site has a general plan zoning land use designation of commercial. Um, it is also zoned neighborhood commercial. So as you can see here, um, to the north of it, it, it is multifamily as well as to the west. South of the project site across Clinton Keith Road in yellow there is single family residential use. And to the east of the parcel in purple there is regional commercial, which is an existing uh, commercial center. Here is an aerial view of the project site. As you can see here, it's uh, substantially surrounded by existing developments. Um, north and uh, west, as mentioned previously, is multifamily. Um, and you can see that the improvements for the roadways are also um, in place already for Sierra Lane, Mitchell Road, and Clinton Keith. 
For context, the recently approved gas station and um, convenience store project um, is located uh, where my cursor is, if I can get it there, right here, um, which is approximately 150 uh, feet from um, edge to edge of the nearest property line. Here is a site plan of the proposed development. As you can see here, there are three parcels. Um, the, the proposal is to leave uh, parcel three vacant and parcel one and two will uh, have the described developments uh, identified in the staff report there. So parcel one features the convenience store, gas station, and attached car wash use. And parcel two is uh, the coffee shop drive-through proposal. Here is a more detailed uh, view of the development for parcels one and two. As you can see here, there are two access points proposed for this project site. A right in restricted access point is provided on Clinton Keith Road, and full turning movements are proposed on the access point uh, on Mitchell Road here. Parcel one features a 3,700 square foot convenience store with a 15, approximately 1,500 square foot car wash use. Uh, the cars that are entering uh, the car wash will be queuing from the westerly uh, side of the parcel. As you can see here, the gas canopy is proposed in the middle of the project site. There's adequate um, act turning movements for delivery trucks uh, proposed on this project site, and this exceeds the minimum 28 feet of uh, dry valve requirements for general circulation in our municipal code. Additionally, parking stalls are proposed adjacent to the building, as well as along Clinton Keith Road. You can see here that there's a striped area where my cursor is, that's a loading space that's provided for that use there, um, as well as a trash enclosure. For parcels one and two, you're seeing all of the parking spaces that's required to support this use um, provided on each parcel. Uh, moving on to parcel two, um, here we have uh, the drive through coffee shop proposed. It features an 886 square foot structure with an attached 336 foot covered uh, patio area, which is where the walk-up awning is for uh, patrons to place their order. And here, as you can see as well, um, I'll point my cursor there. Here is a loading space uh, to serve the coffee shop use as well as a trash enclosure. Queuing for this project will um, actually start on the southerly portion, um, and then they'll wrap around on the east side of the project site, and it offers dual queuing lanes, which exceed our minimum uh, municipal code requirements um, for queuing. Additionally, uh, the applicant has provided staff a queuing analysis to demonstrate that the queuing for this use will not impact um, the, any spillovers onto the adjacent right of way there on Clinton Keith Road. It is um, important to note that no speakers will be proposed for either uses, despite uh, these uses featuring drive-through components for the car wash as well as the, the, um, the coffee shop. Uh, so orders will be taken for the coffee shop um, live with um, the employees there on an iPad. For you are the elevations for the convenience store. So the front elevation south will be facing Clinton Keith Road. And the back elevation identified as north here will be facing the vacant parcel, parcel three, also Mitchell Road um, there that you're seeing. So the elevations here incorporate um, earth tone colors as well as a decorative cornice band. Some of the design features also incorporated are um, varying roof planes as well as a recess on the walls to add some visual interest to the structure there. Here are the east elevation and west elevation. The east elevation will be facing the coffee shop and the west elevation will be facing out into Mitchell Road. Here you can see on the west elevation is where the car wash uh, queuing will begin. It's well, it'll enter and then it'll exit out facing into the coffee shop use adjacent to this parcel. 
you can see here, they've also incorporated a 360 architectural design, um, tying in a lot of the architectural elements that's shown on the primary facade. The gas canopy also features similar colors proposed um, as the primary use of the convenience store. Um, it also incorporated the veneer that you're seeing here at the base of those, that gas canopy. Here is the floor plan for the convenience store. So you can see here, majority of the floor area dedicated uh, within this structure is for the convenience store use. Approximately 5,700 square feet is dedicated to convenience store use. The dash you're seeing before you are the floor area sales dedicated to alcohol sales. And then the attached car wash component um, you're seeing here is comprised of 1,500 square feet floor area. And this is where the queuing will begin um, for that car wash use. It's important to note that the typical cycle time for this car wash will approximately be five minutes, which differs substantially from an express car wash use with an, with an average cycle time for each vehicle of two to three minutes. Here are the elevations for uh, the structure proposed on parcel two, which is the coffee shop. Uh, you're seeing here a lot of the same primary colors that's proposed on the elevation, as well as the stone veneer tying the architecture together with parcel one, with the primary difference of the tower element, which features an accent color um, that's the corporate color for this operator. The front elevation shown here is the one facing Clinton Keith Road. Rear elevation to your top right is facing Mitchell Road. The drive-through window will be facing um, into the convenience store and the walk-up window is facing the adjacent existing community or the adjacent existing commercial center to the east of the project site. Here before you is the floor plan for the coffee shop, uh, you'll see 886 square feet of internal uh, space here. This is solely for um, staff use only, it's back of house. Any operation serving the patrons will be provided via the walk-up window as well as the uh, window for the drive-through queuing area. Uh, none of this area identified here will be accessible by patrons within the, within the structure. And then here where my cursor is, a 336 square foot um, covered patio area where patrons will be walking up. To summarize the operations for the conditional use permit on parcel one, the car wash will operate between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. daily. The convenience store and gas station will be operating um, for 24 hours with the alcohol beverage sales component being restricted from 6 a.m. To, to midnight. At a minimum, two employees will be staffed at that uh, for that given use. Additional employees will be um, brought on to the shift during peak hours. And then the project is also conditioned to provide the same or equivalent equipment analyzed in the noise study to ensure that the project will meet the municipal code requirement. It's important to note that the restriction for that car wash occurring during daytime hours between 7, to 9, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. will also um, enable this use to adhere to the identified allowable noise levels within the zoning designation. Staff has the following recommendation. Consider and approve an addendum to the previous initial study and mitigated dec negative declaration that was prepared for the project in compliance with section 15164 of the, of the California Environmental Quality Act. Secondly, adopt the resolution for this project subject to the conditions of approval and statement of operations identified in attachment one. During the, publishing, pub, the public noticing period, staff received five public comments, comments which were forwarded to the planning commissioners for consideration. This concludes my presentation. I'll, staff is here to answer any questions that you folks might have. Thank you, Ms. Farah. Very well in your presentation. Uh, we're going to take questions from the commission members to the staff, and we'll start with Commissioner Michael. Yeah, thank you. Um, could you please re-explain the, like, the ordering process uh, with the coffee shop? You said that there was going to be, like, a, like, manned with a iPad or something? 
Yes, so um, the, the business model for this particular operator, um, they don't really supply the standard speaker and menu board um, on, on, within the drive-all queuing aisle. So they'll have staff members actively taking orders within the drive-through queuing um, on a tablet. And that's, that's how the orders are placed, which allows for quicker facilitation of the traffic movement through that queuing aisle as well. Okay. Um, and will, will the building allow um, the public to walk in? Did I miss that? Uh, no. So they can't walk in, but there's a walk-up window walk -up where they window. could place an order should they not want to go through the drive through queuing. Okay. Um, where they can park in one of these parking stalls um, and then walk up in that window and order. And how, how many parking stalls are provided there? The total number of parking stalls provided on that parcel is 14. 14, okay. Um, how many of those parking stalls are handicap accessible? Approximately one that I'm seeing on the site plan here. Okay. Will that coffee shop serve any, any food items? That I do not know, but we, we can defer that um, okay. question to We that. can bring that back up later, no problem. Um, That's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, great presentation as always. Thank you very much. Uh, very informative. Um, <clears throat> I like the feature of the double drive uh, for the uh, queuing and kind of the serpentine en entrance there and talking about the coffee shop, you know, from Clinton Key so we don't have the stacking like has been brought up on other projects and things like that. Um, and maybe a question for, uh, obviously for staff, is that something that is <clears throat> that is required by our code that here to forward we're gonna have double drive-throughs um, as part of that or is that based upon uh, numbers at, on certain projects? Uh, what's kind of the basis of, of that? I'd like to see more of that personally. The, the dual stacking, as yeah, you've mentioned? Yeah, the dual stacking drive throughs there. Because I know a lot of businesses have retrofitted to that model, uh, but is that something that, um, moving forward, that that would be the standard, per se? Uh, I'll, and I'll begin to answer your question just based off of our municipal code requirements. So our standard requirement in our municipal code only calls for the ability to, act, to adequately um, queue six vehicles. That's what our code calls for. However, certain uses, as we know, there are certain operators right. that have a lot more traffic movement throughout the site, and that's when we request supplemental um, information wh whether their queuing will actually impact um, the adjacent uh, right of way and whether that'll spill over to the site. Also, Chair or Maya might want. Okay. No, just a, that's a perfect response there. I just want to say that there's a lot of site constraints with these designs, and we are seeing some providers, such as Chick-fil-A, actually go to a three-lane mm -hmm. uh, type of environment. So you're going to see some operators as more of the popular their customer demands. They're trying to make sure that they can queue. I think a lot of it is what, by the time they order to pick up. They're, the number of minutes it takes from the order prep to pick up the window, that's where a lot of these companies are trying to shave time down and be more efficient. So by putting employees in the parking lot, like you see with In-N-Out, that's an efficiency metric. You're not waiting to get to the menu board to place the order. An order is being taken to you in advance of that so they can prep that order. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great example. And I know some other fast food places where they have, they because they built it originally with just one single lane. And so, you know, just by popularity, they've actually put somebody out front there to kind of get ahead of it during certain uh, peak times, if you will. I, I like the idea, especially since it's next to a major arterial, that... Um, you know, there's not stacking going through the parking lot, which makes it harder for, for people to park, right? And then the possibility that it would actually go out into the street. I'm just, maybe something to the future, maybe something that, uh, do we look at, relook at our formula? It seems like uh, uh, fast foods are becoming, uh, restaurants are becoming more popular. And so having six, is that enough? And to somehow, you know, kind of relook at that in the future and go, okay, well, probably you know, needs to increase to accommodate faster for that. Just food for thought. But I like it in this project, so I'm happy with that. Along with that, too, is, and I, I didn't see it, maybe I overlooked it, 
Um, I do like the employee out there, you know, facilitating with an iPad. Is that in the conditions of approval? It is not referenced specifically in the conditions of approval. However, we could add that language. I, I think it would be helpful because what if a uh, another they, they change their business model, um, so then it goes back to the stacking issue again, uh, or they uh, sell to another similar type of business, and that isn't um, part of their their business practice. I think that that would be based upon all the dynamics and the traffic backup. That would be um, a good add for the conditions of approval. Um, I like the, uh, to the Circle K there, I like having uh, the minimum of two cashiers on duty. I was gonna ask about that, but that's great that that's part of the uh, business model. Um, is that part of the conditions of approval as well too? It is not specified in the conditions of approval that there will be two employees minimum, so. I'm putting my law enforcement hat back on um, and I, I'm just thinking, okay, well, if, you, if there is only one and this retailer has two minimum, which I think is great. You know, someone goes in late night beer run, they uh, two doors open, can't really do anything with either, either one door needs to not, you know, have accessible, which I think would be a fire issue. So would, would a minimum of two uh, be something that we could add into the conditions of approval in case they sold to another retailer and said, oh, we can get away with one. It's up to the discretion of the commissioners to add that condition. Okay, okay. And then the last, uh, the last thing, uh, parcel number three, it's not being uh, developed at this point in time. And you can know if you go out there on Sierra Lane, uh, parking is a commodity. Uh, or a, a, a um, is highly desired right there and, and parking on the street and things like that. What are they plan on doing with the, is it just gonna be a dirt lot? You know, parking, people could just arbitrarily park there. Uh, we'll, we'll have some temporary fencing or some posting, those type of things like that, um, just out of curiosity. That is a great question. So in terms of um, the street parking being an issue within that area, as you yeah. mentioned, um, this the improvements are already in place for Sierra Lane and Mitchell right. Road, as you mentioned. So the sidewalk is in there. Um, the project is conditioned to provide temporary fencing around parcel three, as well as temporary landscaping for that site. So it won't really be accessible to the public in that sense. And it also will kind of deter a lot of um, folks from dumping too, as we can see with some commercial lots um, that's stayed vacant in the past. Right, then that, that's the other issue. So I'm glad that there's gonna be some uh, temporary fencing yeah. there. And that, that's a part of the conditions of approval for the phasing. Excellent. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all the questions and comments I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Wojciech. Chair, thank you for the presentation. Chair, thank you for the presentation. And in fact, it was so good, I have no questions. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vice Chair Harlan. Appreciate the details, Farrah, thank you. Um, just a couple things, uh, just to kind of verify the timing as I went through the report. So it looks like August 2010, there was a zone change and general plan amendment for this area. In July of 2011, uh, the Planning Commission approved the subdivision, correct? Yeah. Could you repeat the date one more time? I uh, July, uh, so August 2010, there was a zone change and general plan amendment. July 2011, uh, the Planning Commission actually approved this subdivision, correct? That is correct. And then July 2013, the parcel map was recorded. November 21, the application filed for development. And August 23, application complete, and here we are, right? That is correct. Awesome, thank you. The looking at the noise uh, piece, right, especially with the car wash, in looking at the conditions of approval, it says the project should utilize one Aqua Dry FS40 dryer system as specified in the noise study. Uh, so staff is able to determine whether noise levels are met at the construction drawing review, then a noise memorandum or revised noise study shall be provided. 
looking at that and then looking at what the numbers were projected, I think code calls for a 50 decibels. This is going to come in pretty close, 48, 49. Looks like we're looking at this before. Is there anything within the CUP or any plans to look at the actual noise afterwards, right? Uh, thank you for your question. So the, the noise level that's identified there is taken from t 10 feet from the noise source. Um, the, the applicant can also provide um, additional information on that. They have their experts on board as well to answer any specific questions, but I'll answer it to the best of my ability. So 10 feet is where that noise source is projected. Um, what we're seeing here is I've quoted those, staff has quoted that specific equipment because that's what they've analyzed in their noise report to uh, be in place in order to mitigate for the noise. Um, so I, we, we place that condition there to capture any changes outside of what was analyzed in the noise study that we carefully reviewed. Um, the, the noise level that you've identified there is from the receptor property line, so I could see how it's alarming to see 89 decibels from this point source whereas you're quoting what's required across the street to the residences. So as sound propagates throughout a distance, it reduces in, in um, its loudness, I suppose. Um, so what you're seeing here is the minimum requirement to meet the code um, that's allowable for the residential receptors to the south and to the west of the project site. Got it, so that's, so that's as the plan goes, is there anything to capture actual once it's complete to see uh, if in fact the the plan was met? That, that's a great question. So we do have our code enforcement team um, that, that'll be you know, monitoring any noise complaints should, should they exceed it in the future. If there's any unauthorized equipment changes or changes in their operation that would exceed the allowable levels, yes. Um, the noise, the, our municipal code would require them to comply with a noise ordinance. Great, thank you. I know from my days in the uh, Northwest, uh, Dutch Brothers was well received up there, and I think it'll be very popular. Popular here. Uh, looking at the convenience store, uh, looks to me like, uh, based on where the car wash is going to be positioned, that deliveries will be front door received. Precisely, it's it's more uh, the side here. So I'll identify the loading st the loading um, space that's dedicated for this um, project. So the front of the store would really be facing Clayton Keith Road. It runs parallel, um, and then the loading will occur um, on the side of the building. Got it. So there will be a designated spot for the Frito truck, the Coke truck, Pepsi truck. Et that is correct. Yes. Okay, got it. Um, the trash cans. It looked to me like some of these were placed maybe around the perimeter and kind of rectangular areas versus maybe up against a wall. Or did I maybe misread that right? I guess my question mm -hmm. on the trash cans is if you look at, let's say, the office space down here below us here to the west, right, where those are placed, sometimes those will, that'll create a blind spot coming around. Are we comfortable with where these trash cans are placed that that will not create a blind spot as traffic drives and works its way through? That's a great question. Um, the, the, the location of the trash enclosure um, is placed to minimize really um, also viewpoints from the public right of way as well as the residences as well. So placing these trash receptacles um, closer to the interior of the center um, stops that from happening and it minimizes some of the impacts with noise and nuisance when it comes to having that placed near closer to the, the right of way. Um, we can certainly during a plan check um, see if there's any visual impacts for that um, for traffic uh, that's e exiting the site. Um, but given the, the width of that drive aisle, it's unlikely to cause any traffic impacts. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. A couple of questions that I have. Do you have an aerial of the area? Yes. Okay. Where is this in relationship to Costco? Uh, Costco will be where my cursor is, across, across the freeway. Across this way the freeway. 215, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So it's east of the project site. It's a little over. Okay. It's almost a mile away. Mile away. Okay. What uh, What is the distance from the high school 
uh, area and uh, having high school kids come over here uh, possibly uh, to the convenience store. I, I do not know the exact um, distance from the high school that you're referring to across the freeway. Okay. I Give me one moment, I could probably pull that up for you. So it's not readily. As the crow flies approximately 2,700 feet away. Okay. But not really convenient to people walking out of the high school into this project. Correct? I would not say so unless they're on their way to their, their home. Okay. Um, How many, uh, let's go to the gas station, or I want to stay with the convenience store. What about gathering around the back of the convenience store? the loitering issue. Is there a loitering issue or did I see that the back of that uh, convenience store has the car wash? That is correct. The back of the convenience store features that car wash which would prohibit loitering within that area. All right. So we, that takes care of the loitering issue from that parcel that's not developed yet. And that parcel that's not developed yet will have fencing around it so it's not accessible. That is correct. On the gas station, what are the number of pumps on this gas station? Great question. There are 12 pumps featured in that gas canopy. 12 pumps. And how uh, underground tanks, are there any underground tanks being put into this project? Yes, there are. There are two underground tanks, which is a typical standard for most gas stations. And it's featured here. I'll hover my cursor around it. Uh, yep. You will see it here. <laughs> near the parking stalls on Clinton Keith Road. What about the safety aspect of leakage from these tanks? Are these the newest tanks that are leak free or is there a worry by the residents around there that we will have leaking occurring out of these tanks? Thank you for your question. I defer that, um, the answer to the applicant. Uh, they have more details on what type of tanks they're using to prohibit leaks. Um, the project um, will be required to comply with county as well as state and federal regulations. So, But they could supplement that answer um, when, when they have a chance to um, answer that. Regarding the inter, uh, environmental study and analysis, do we feel that that has been completed in its entirety, or is there a necessity to add more of a study or an analysis of the environmental area? That is a great question. So um, as initially um, identified in the resolution, there was an initial study and mitigated negative declaration that did a deep dive on the proposed uses within uh, this vacant site here. Um, our applicant has prepared an addendum to supplement that initial study and had updated a number of technical studies which involve reviewing air quality impacts, greenhouse gas impacts, queuing impacts for the project, noise, so that all of the current uses that you're seeing here are adequately analyzed in compliance with CEQA. You didn't mention anything about lighting. As this parcel seems to sit at the end of residential areas and across from residential areas, mm -hmm. what's the lighting going to be like in this play, in this project? The lighting uh, for this project uh, will be shielded and will comply with the conditions specified um, for this use. So commercial uses abutting residential are restricted in the height as well as the brightness of lights that they can use um, within their project site. So this project will be conditioned and reviewed to comply with those standards. Is this project with the car wash and the convenience store and the coffee shop all under the same developer or is the developer of parcel one uh, going to look for uh, a provider for uh, the coffee shop? We've had this place before and it's been difficult. Mm, sure. Um, so. There's one developer 
under this application, and we have one applicant, in order to kind of mitigate for the impacts of partial development that you're seeing here, we've required them to submit a phasing plan application, which would control some of the aspects of maybe disjointed development within the area, as well as provide adequate screening if one of the operators does falter through, um, as can be the case with parcelized commercial development. Will there be, once they start um, ground movement, will there be screening around this project uh, from a dust control standpoint, being that you've got residential uh, residences around that? Yes, it is a standard uh, condition for the applicant to provide uh, construction screening to mitigate for um, site as well as dust um, impacts during construction. And does staff see any risks that are outstanding at this point in time? Not at this point in time. That was not analyzed. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your a presentation, Vera, and your answering of your questions. You seem you. to be very up on this project. Thank you, Chair Fisher. Uh, I'd like to, at this time, have the applicant give his presentation, if the applicant is prepared to give a presentation. The applicant will be limited to a 15-minute uh, presentation and then a 10-minute rebuttal if necessary and if requested. On this, uh, we really appreciate it. And then also, I would like to thank staff, uh, Farah uh, and Jared in particular. Uh, we've been on this uh, uh, this journey with them for the past few years, um, and thought and staff has been really diligent and thoughtful in um, in responses and uh, bringing forth the best possible project uh, in front of planning commission. So we appreciate all the time uh, that staff has given us. Um, next slide here, please. Um, so Vice Chair Harlan, your, your questions were really uh, good about some of the past uh, timing on this project that I thought would be good to highlight here. Uh, the applicant, uh, Murrieta Cat, uh, 2012, it's an entity of uh, BJ Delzer with Malia Homes. Um, they, they built all of the residential within that red box there. So on those dates that you had set forth, uh, that entity uh, processed this, call it a master project. So on that 23.5 acres, uh, that was all processed and studied as a single project with an environmental document that looked at both the residential and the commercial component. Um, we've put this slide in here twice so we can refer back to it, but if you can go to the, the next slide here. Uh, so again, um, you know, a little, you know, a little history, um, you know, we, not only was the process, the project processed in those time frames, but the involvement goes back to 2005 when the, the project was originally being conceptualized. So this is a long time coming and, and frankly, it's totally overdue uh, for us to be at this point to move the commercial forward. Um, and we're really excited to do that. And we want to you know, finish the obligations we have here to deliver on that original project. Um, and we think what we've set forth here is the, the start of being able to do that. Um, with, with that, uh, you know, being primarily a housing developer, uh, when, when conversations were first had with the city, it was to build housing on the whole site, you know, being that that's what the developer does. And at the time, the city wanted to preserve uh, a portion of the project for commercial. So this, this five-acre piece that we're talking about uh, was allocated for commercial and zoned uh, neighborhood commercial. Um, with that, uh, parcel map 36281 for that overall 23.5 acre encompassing this project was approved. Uh, it included 30,000 square feet of retail. Uh, and like I said earlier, that was all studied via a mitigated negative declaration. Um, obviously, as you could tell from the aerial and 
from, from you all knowing it, um, that residential has been completed. And like I said, the commercial has, has sat there uh, really based upon uh, leasing efforts and, and tenant interest. Um, we came on board, uh, we're, we're partners with Malia and we specialize in retail development. And it was really important for, uh, for Murrieta Cat 2012 to move this forward. So they, they brought us in just based on relationships that we have with tenants and knowledge of tenant requirements to try to put forth a plan that could actually move forward um, because they'd been struggling with it for, for over a decade trying to attract tenants to it in order to, to get to this point here that we're at tonight. Uh, next slide. Um, as part of the um, as part of the original approved project on the 23.5 acres, there were quite a bit of offsite and infrastructure improvements that were required of the applicant. Um, so, just thought it'd be good to you know quickly highlight those. There, they're all in front of you, but uh, that included a lot of street improvements. It included it included the widening of Mitchell Road for when that eventually connects up to uh, Lanell Lane. Um, also, the dedication the the land that is now Sierra Lane in between the residential and the commercial that used to be part of uh, the land that they controlled. They dedicated that for the construction of Sierra Lane. Uh, all the water quality improvements, the signalization, uh, and then all of the uh, you know, utility improvements for that whole area were done. Uh, on this commercial piece, uh, also the sidewalks are in place, the perimeter uh, landscaping, which is for the uh, stormwater retention, is all in place. And then, like I said, this piece is just has sat there, um, and it's it's been challenging just from a tenant standpoint. I think you know there's a lot of really exciting things going on in that area and development that has occurred. But unfortunately, you know, for, that's fortunate, but unfortunately for us, that has taken away tenants that have chosen to locate in some of these larger projects closer to the freeway with bigger anchors. Um, uh, but with, or next slide here. You know, our hope with, with these uh, couple of tenants that we've secured that that will help you know, kickstart the rest of the project um, and start, you know, finishing the commercial as we originally set out to do. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and then that's just, you know, as we've talked about, just to circle back again. So, you know, again, within that red box, that's the, the 23.5 acres, which was previously approved, including the 30,000 square feet of retail where it says subject site. Uh, next slide. There we go, thank you. Uh, so again, uh, Vice Chair, as you said, you know, we came back in with this application in 2021. Uh, we've been working with the city you know, since then, working with our tenants, uh, coordinating on the plans. And then as part of that, uh, from an environmental CEQA standpoint, we had to study you know, if our proposed project had any additional impacts from what was studied in that original uh, CEQA document. Um, so we've done uh, in-depth analysis on that in various studies uh, to be able to address any questions that, that may arise. Um, next slide. Uh, our site plan fair uh, did a really good job walking through this, so I won't uh, duplicate that. Um, we, we were, we, I would say that we've tried to be really mindful though in, in how we lay out these particular uses. Uh, for instance, with the exit of the car wash, having the dryers, you know, making sure we locate that towards the interior part of the site, also the way that that's shielded by the building. Uh, same goes for the drive-through, uh, which I've got a slide on later, but being really mindful of where the entry to the drive-through is uh, and how we can manage queuing. And then also uh, staff had asked us to obtain reciprocal access with the property immediately to the east uh, where the Del Taco is. Uh, so that driveway is now, uh, will be open uh, for vehicles to drive through, which just uh, helps with circulation for that whole property. Uh, next slide. Uh, uh, just quickly, um, I, I, we, we put in the adjacent properties uh, just so you can uh, see where the inspiration was for our building designs. Uh, the original project, original buildings we had submitted uh, with Dutch Brothers was a much more contemporary look with a silver building, you know, in line with their prototype. But we were able to work with staff and with the tenants to uh, come up with elevations that match with that overall block. Next slide. And Farah walked you through all those so we can 
flip through there. A little information on Dutch Brothers. Uh, again, Fair did a good job. Uh, highlighted in red there is the fact that there is no speaker box um, using the iPads. Um, there, is, there is no kitchen inside of Dutch Brothers. Uh, all of the food that they offer is prepackaged. Uh, they call them snacks uh, that you can pick up. Um, so everything about it is geared for really quick service. Uh, so they're not preparing a meal you know, while you're waiting. Uh, so that really helps with the flow. Um, uh, next slide. Uh, this is a little bit on queuing. Um, anticipated there may be some questions about that. Uh, and that's something that we studied, as Farah said, with a queuing analysis. Um, the way that they look at that is what is at the 85th percentile, how many cars you know, would you see based upon studying these other Dutch Brothers locations. And they came up with nine cars. Uh, our, our plan has 15, which are labeled in the red with the double drive through. And then we took that one step further as well uh, to put a contingency plan in place uh, that's both analyzed in our queuing analysis and also part of the Dutch Brothers lease that in the event that queuing were to exceed those 15 cars, that driveway up at the top could be coned off and the drive through could be directed uh, further south down to where you see those other five red cars not labeled. Uh, so just right there, you would get to 20 cars and then that could further uh, extend out before you would be backing up into any kind of right away or any kind of driveway affecting any you know, neighboring tenants as well. So uh, next slide. And then Circle K. Um, I uh, would just note that uh, Circle K has accepted all of the conditions of approval as written. Um, totally understand on the safety side of things. Uh, it's a big deal for them. Uh, that's why they do uh, staff the way that they do. Uh, a lot of times, you know, in peak periods, they would have you know, more than two people. Uh, they say that it's usually two uh, at all times because they use those middle hours of the night usually for stocking or cleaning. So most of the time, there would be those that second employee there to handle those obligations. Um, but they're putting a, this is a five to $6 million investment for them into building this station. Uh, so having a really safe, clean environment is extremely important. Uh, they've committed to working with the city's police department on a security plan uh, to you know, really get out in front, you know, put preventative measures in place, one, and then two, if any issues arise, to be able to um, step in, take action, and prevent them from happening again in the future. So uh, very important for them to be you know, good community partners. Uh, and uh, that concludes my presentation. Uh, I would, uh, lastly, I would say that we have, our architect is in attendance, uh, as well as our SQL consultants from Kimley Horn, uh, and our traffic engineer as well. And lastly, we have, uh, John Caglia from Dutch Brothers, uh, available as well. Thank but, you very much for your presentation. Uh, we'll take comments from the commissioners to the developer, if you would like, please. Thank Commissioner you. Michael. Sure. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, so to ask you, will, will there be any quick food items, either hot or cold, served at the Dutch Brothers? Yeah, and if, uh, if okay with you, Commissioner, uh, I can ask John Caglia to come up and answer uh, that question as sure. well. If you would just identify yourself with your name and who you represent. Sure, my name is John Caglia. I'm with Dutch Bros. Uh, hi, so same question. Um, will, will, will Dutch Brothers serve any food, or will it just strictly be coffee? We have a very limited food. We just have uh, like a snack bar and what we call muffin tops that are prepackaged. Okay. We don't really consider ourselves to have any food. Our primary business is beverages only. Okay. Um, and the hours of the coffee shop, do we know what, the, what that will be? I think they're... Five to 11. Yeah, five to 11. I What's think, that? Five to 11. Five to 11? Yeah. Yeah. 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yeah, I think that's on Friday and Saturday only. I think it's part of the conditions of approval. That's identified um, in the uh, noise. The noise study analyzes for them to operate within those time frames as well. Okay. Um, we do not have those hours commemorated in the development plan specifically, um, but it's in the commissioner's purview to ask that, to to identify okay. that restriction. Okay. Um, no, I think I think that's... That's a long day, but those are good hours. Um, 
you know, it gets pretty hot here in the summertime. Uh, and also gets very cold here in the morning time. Um, is, is there going to be any shade structures for the two employees that will be standing out there well, holding an iPad? And it'll probably be more than two employees. Uh, we just opened a store on Lake Elsinore uh -huh. Street here. Uh, currently, we have between five and six outside. Wow. So uh, we do employ what we call during the summer cold suits, or uh, you know, they're kind of ice packed suits that they wear outside to keep cool. Okay. And then we also do bring bring out umbrellas and stuff like that. And then uh, for the winter time. Obviously, they do have the required gear to be outside during the oh, winter. Okay. So. Well, I don't mean something something to consider. Um, we have a Chick Fil A right down the street here. Obviously, it's popular, like most Chick Fil A's. Yeah. And in the last, what would you say, year or two, they've installed permanent shade covers because obviously they have you know a lot of employees out there yeah. taking orders as they do to kind of speed up the process. And they kind of started with that umbrellas and this and that, but. You know, you get into the days of July, August, September, even into October. I mean, it's it's a it's a long three four month period that it's it's pretty pretty hot out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we do have stores currently in the, in an empire out in the desert as okay. well. So we're familiar with with the heat okay. and the okay. cold. So makes sense. Yeah. It's funny I've never seen no the Dutch Brothers, but um, okay. Well, that's all the questions I have for you in particular. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and actually, I think that might be it for me. So thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner. <clears throat> thank you for your uh, presentation. Looks like a great project. I appreciate the fact that um, <clears throat> you went into the history of how we got here, and especially the, the part where council at the time, when they, when they approved it, they wanted a commercial component on the property, which didn't really have to be done. But, um, but you, and so here we are today, right? The final piece of it kind of put in... Uh, putting the puzzle pieces uh, together. So I appreciate that for the, the good knowledge uh, for us as well as the public. I do like the uh, elevation and, and I appreciate the fact that uh, the land, landscaping and the look of the, of the site is, you know, kind of matches uh, surrounding properties and didn't really deviate from that and, and kind of fits with the, with the neighborhood, if you will. So I appreciate that. Um, you heard a couple of my uh, conditional conditions of approval um, suggestions and probable um, you know, motions for amendment there, and I just wanted to see if you would be supportive of memorializing uh, the two aspects as far as the, the human as, uh, as, asset um, and aspect of the site. So most notably, the what is now the Dutch Brothers uh, of having a, an employee help facilitate and take orders there, that that will that business model will continue uh, as long as that site is there, whether it's Dutch Brothers or not. And then also on the uh, uh, convenience store side, that there will be two employees uh, on duty at all times, because that's what that's pretty much what we're being what we're being told and sold. And so I want to memorialize that in our conditions of approval. Yeah, uh, very good questions. Thank you. Um, I think uh, on the gas station side, uh, we'd be okay with the two, you know, ex with some kind of exception for like, call it the graveyard hours. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, how those are defined, you know, if that's from mid midnight to 5am, um, knowing that there may not always be a second employee there. Um, a lot of it will depend on the volumes and the activity level. If there's activity then, then they would definitely have to. Uh, if it's very quiet, then on times when they're not stocking or cleaning, they may just have the one. Um, so, you know, we would, we would like to, uh, we would like to see those hours carved off from that uh, if possible. Um, and then, you know, as it relates to Dutch Brothers, uh, it may, may be beneficial to have John speak to it, but I, I would say, you know, for uh, ownership, uh, we have leases in place with both of these tenants. Uh, as much as we love Dutch Brothers and hope they stay at the site forever, you know, our intention is to hold on to this, you know, for a long time as well. Um, and at some point, Dutch Brothers may say, hey, this isn't working for us, and another concept comes in where that condition could be problematic, you know, or, you know, I'm sure from Dutch Brothers' standpoint, if they change something across all of their locations, you know, it's pretty hard to have, you know, one of one location have an opera, a condition of approval. 
that may dictate how they do operations, you know, differently. But John, would you add sure. anything? Um, as you mentioned, currently our model is to go out to your car, take your order. Um, what I will say though, with with challenging markets with current minimum wage standards coming into place and, and current label storage as well. We may change that. I don't know that. It's not something on radar. All my stores, we open our in-person, but to put a condition saying we would have to have a person out there all the time would probably limit our operations in the future if we had to. <clears throat> uh, we are probably one of the, actually we are the only brand that has no speakers outside because even Chick-fil-A, uh, when they're slow, you order through a, a, a speaker, even in and out though. We're the only, uh, retailer that I'm aware of that has no speakers at all. So do I see us putting them in the future? No, but would I say that that's not possible based on the, the changing climate for minimum wage and labor shortages in the state? I never know. So to put that condition for us, that would be kind of, like you said, burdensome. I believe we have a 10-year lease here. We I don't plan going anywhere anytime soon as we've been working with Tom here for two years, has it been two years? Just to come here. So I don't plan going anywhere anytime soon, so. Okay, thank you uh, for that. When, when is your, and I'll come back to that, um, when is your construction timeline? For us, it's it's anywhere between 90 and 120 days. That you plan on breaking ground and actually putting this project forward? Yes, well, I mean, after, well, sorry, you wanna, you wanna take that one? Uh, oh. John, I believe, John was referring to once we give them the pad and he's able to start construction, it's 90 to 120. I think you, on average, you say 105 yeah. days. Maybe, maybe a better question. When do you when do you expect to open? Yeah, so I think a lot of that depends on how quickly we can get permits approved. Um, you know, if we were to get approved tonight, uh, we'll start our team, and uh, typically it prepare, takes, you know, 60 days to prepare plans uh, to where we would uh, deliver both of the pads, uh, and then we have, from there, probably four to five months' worth of work. So... Um, you know, if all, if all goes well, we're probably looking at turning over pads uh, sometime early next year, and then they'd be opening like middle of next year, conservatively. So I, I guess my only final comment would be, my only consternation is when, you know, this was presented, it was, <clears throat> um, it says so right in, the, in, in what we were told, is minimum of two employees for the Circle K. And then this is the business model for the drive-through there and, and the stacking, those type of things like that, and that is the business model. So, um, you know, if there's another business, I guess we could kind of take a, a look at it. But from what we're told, the pluses with the project is one thing, but I'm hearing some hesitation that you, you would want to continue with what we were to being told. So. No, that's that's the plan. Um, you know, that's coming directly from Circle K that they would have have, have two at any time. Um, I think John brought up a good point with minimum wage and you know changing market conditions as things go. You know, what are volumes? Um, you know, does it make sense to have a second employee there at you know four in the morning? Um, it may not. If it's a condition, then you know it's possible they just have to have that. Um, their intention is to have two at any time and, you know, most likely have more than that during peak times. So, um, you know, I just, you know, it's, it's hard to overcommit, but what I would say is they're completely committed to operating this, you know, in an A plus manner. Um, and they don't want the problems. If a second employee prevents problems, then they're going to be all for that. So, well, and, and I would just I add our duty is to make sure what's yeah. best for the community. So. Yeah, I, just, I don't want to give any impression that we're like right. skirting an obligation to, um, you know, really put our best foot forward um, as an as operators, you know, as landlords um, to deliver a quality project. Um, a lot of credit, you know, to Circle K and to Dutch Brothers that, you know, they are quality operators um, and they they want to operate in in quality manner. Um, when when both reviewed the conditions of approval. Uh, they accepted, you know, many of those without any discussion. Um, and frankly, there was a couple that had some discussion, and they ultimately said, "That's okay. We'll we'll move forward anyways. We'll we'll take it on because we want to do this deal and we want to do it right." So, um, I yeah, I don't want to I don't want to come across being hesitant, but um, conditions are just things that you know live in perpetuity. Um, so that that would be the only hesitancy. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Wojcik. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for that uh, presentation, Mr. Carpenter.
A uh, couple things. Um, trying to be a little bit sensitive to the uh, residents to the west of the project. And, uh, you know, whenever we see gas stations, there's always, well, probably the biggest concern is odor, you know, smelling the fumes. And then, um, I don't know, sometimes I don't know if I'd want to look across the street and look at a gas station. Um, as attractive as you try to make them, it's still a gas station. Um, did you ever look at taking your project and actually flipping the buildings and having the gas station more on the parcel two and then parcel one be in the coffee shop? Uh, there were previous iterations of that site plan. It gets really difficult uh, based upon the location of that uh, curb cut. Uh, so there was a plan that was previously um, worked on and even with an operator, uh, the operator ended up not moving forward and the other operators couldn't lay out on the parcel given the constraint of that drive aisle. Um, so it, it really, you know, all of the gas operators we've talked to all needed to be on that hard corner. And the and Dutch Brothers fits really well on that parcel because their building is smaller than what a typical fast food tenant right, is right. since they don't have the indoor seating. Okay. So. And then uh, the other concern I have is, so there's a 2015 traffic study that you guys rely on in this. Uh, that was up, so that was the old study. Uh, as part of this project, we did a new trip generation analysis, which showed that uh, there was no additional trips from what was uh, proposed in the original environmental document. Um, that was worked on with Brian Stevenson, um, and our traffic engineer is here uh, this evening as well. And then in addition to that, our traffic engineer studied the turning movements uh, out onto Mitchell, the queuing on Mitchell, as well as the queuing on site. So my concern, there's two concerns about the traffic, well, I guess three. There's three concerns. Uh, it's it's a bit stale. It's nine years old, and I know you updated it with, I guess, this particular issue. But secondly, Clinton Keith today is much different from 2015. This Clinton Keith now they opened it up all the way to Winchester Road to the east, so it's now a major corridor for not only us but the French Valley people and people that live in Hemet use it, and it's just. I, I live right by there, and I can tell you in seven years, it's totally different than it was seven years ago once that opened up. Secondly, Costco opened, and so that's kind of created a nightmare. So I guess my question is, does the study you have today take that in consideration? Yes, and I can answer to the best of my ability. If, if uh, okay with you, Commissioner, it might help to have Pranesh, our traffic sure. engineer, join us as well for the discussion. Sure. Um, If you could please identify yourself and who, what firm you're with. Thank you. Uh, my name is Pranesh Tarikere, and I'm with Wood Rogers. So my, my, my issue is the 2015 traffic survey was done way before Clinton Keith was busted all the way through to the east. Um, and then the Costco came in and all the development around that area. So I, I, it's just dramatically different today than it was back in 2015. Does your traffic survey take all that into consideration? Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So uh, we did do a new uh, focused traffic study, and we did do new counts in 2022, uh, which uh, included the intersections adjacent to the site. Um, so the 2015 traffic study was just used to compare the trip generation of what was analyzed at the time and what's the net new trips that, you know, based on the proposed use. But there was new counts and intersection level of service was calculated, queuing was calculated, all based on new traffic counts. Okay, thank you for that. On, um, I don't have any more questions on the traffic, but thank you. Thank you. On, um, on Mitchell, street or road or whatever it's called, uh, I see you're putting a monument there. And I can't tell from the, the diagram how, how far north that monument sits from Clinton Keith Road. Can you tell me kind of, if you know how far off that's gonna sit back from Clinton Keith and what kind of monument are we talking about? 
So the, the signage is actually not part of this application. Uh, as part of a condition of approval, we have to sit, submit a separate sign program. Uh, now, that said, we did show uh, designated signage locations on our plan just so that we could uh, lay out the landscaping and utilities around those. Um, so there are some proposed locations, but that would all be subject to further city approval. Um, that was that was the diagram I saw it on. Yeah, so okay. those, you see the monument signs on either side. Those are the uh, fuel pricing signs for the gas station. Okay. Um, and then there would be a sign on the Dutch Brothers parcel, which would be proposed to be multi-tenant uh, with Dutch Brothers on it, and then any future tenants on that parcel three, which would be you know the second phase, call it. Or the, the phase beyond these initial two tenants, I should say. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because my I understand it's not part of tonight. My concern would be having a neon sign across the street from uh, residents. That's all. Yeah. Um, okay. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vice Chair Harlan. Just a couple uh, couple quick things. So, um, Tom, this has been a fifteen to twenty year journey. I appreciate you filling in that uh, that timeline and uh, appreciate your grit and helping to bring this thing forward. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, John, I worked for a uh, large beverage company in Oregon and covered pretty much that whole state and saw a whole lot of Dutch Brothers and a whole lot of different parking lot parking lots and uh, throughout the throughout the state. This is the nicest looking Dutch Brothers building that I have seen. So, uh, so thank you for helping to well, help. Thank you. We try to impress, and, and obviously, with us coming to the market, obviously, we want to put our best foot forward to the area. Um, like I said, we just opened one. Can you speak into the microphone, please? Uh, like I said, I just want to appreciate that. You know, this will be uh, probably the second or third in this uh, this area uh, behind the Lake Elsinore. So we just opened on Lakeshore. If you guys want to, you know, stop by in the area, uh, the elevations are very similar, and you, you can see how we operate as a brand. And uh, you will. A lot of people like to say, oh, here comes another coffee store. I don't like to say we're a coffee store. We're, we're a destination because we bring excitement, and, and sometimes the pickup, we, the pickup we give to people isn't coffee. So, you know, I'm just excited to be here. A very popular brand up there. And then, again, the, the infrastructure and the building you're bringing here is outstanding. So, so thank, thank you. you. Um, so we got Dutch Brothers, Circle K going in there. We have a fuel station. I don't think we covered what's the fuel brand? Uh, Circle K. Okay. Circle would K be okay. the operator, yes. Okay. And then um, most likely on the fuel as well. Okay. Would be Circle right. K. That's all I have. Thank you, gentlemen. On the Dutch Brothers opening, did I get it right? 5 a.m. to 11 p.m.? Yes, which is uh, the 11 p.m. is Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, typical closing would be 10 p.m. Okay. Which is in line with uh, the other stores in the area uh, that Dutch Brothers operates. But 5 a.m. is the opening? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I want to ask a question about Circle K and Dutch Brothers. Uh, I wanted to know if those leases are in uh, progress or they have been completed. And you mentioned something about a senior lease, which I'd like to understand. Uh, the leases are fully executed. Um, I'm not, I, I'm, I apologize, Chair. I'm not sure uh, seen, uh, uh, the reference to senior lease. Now you made reference to senior lease as you were talking about the properties being leased. I just wanted to know what a senior lease was. Uh, I'm sorry, Chair. I don't, uh, I don't recall uh, how I used that. Uh, but I think, I think maybe what I was saying was uh, those were the first two leases, you know, as far as this overall piece. And we're hoping that those two leases you know, spur more activity on the rest of the property. But those leases are complete. Yes, yes, fully executed leases. Do you know what the term of the lease time frame is? Is it a 10-year lease, 15-year lease, 20-year lease? Uh, I believe the Dutch Brothers is 10 and the uh, Circle K lease is longer than 10. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your answering of the questions from uh, the commissioners. Yeah. Thank you very appreciate much. It. I appreciate your time and the questions. Appreciate it. Uh, Chairman Fisher, if, if I could clarify something for Commissioner Vrooman. Uh, in, in Commissioner Vrooman's Q&A, he's talking about if the project were to then change in ownership, and then we'd have a menu board. I just wanted to call out that existing neighborhoods that live to the south of Clinton Keith can hear the Jack in the Box menu board. So I, I think I just wanted to respond to that, that 
if there was a change in circumstance, the public would not be aware of that tonight. So I just wanted to offer that back as a response. Uh, just for clarification, what, um, what did you mean by that? Sorry, it's just that in the past we've received complaints um, about the Jack in the Box um, menu order. It's right across the street. A lot of people can hear that. It may or may not meet the noise ordinance, but if we're, a pro or if we're working on a project where they're going to be doing parking lot ordering and there's a new, new ownership and they flip it to a menu board, I think we should look at that carefully, that change, because I don't want to exacerbate an existing nuisance issue uh, for the community because tonight they would only be aware that there's not going to be that type of squawk box and that might have changed their position. So I just offer that for the transparency of the public who's complained about that issue. So, so I think I agree with you, the, the having a live person there, not just for the traffic mitigation, but also for the noise reduction or the, or the, the echoing uh, of a squawk box, if you will, like you said, you know, for people hearing that, the better option is having a live person there. And possibly what the Planning Commission could do is add a condition of approval that if there's a change that we would analyze that through an updated noise study or some sort of technical information. Because I, I really want to be responsive to the public who has brought this to our attention. If there's a shift, there's not a shift tonight, but things do change over time. You know, after you've expired your 10 or 15 year investment, you might sell it to another provider. So at that point in time, I would just want us to be careful as planning staff. And we could certainly bring it back if there was a need to change. If you added a condition tonight for these specific operators, it could come back to the commission, let's say, you know, if that's in 10 years or 20 years, it could come back and reconsider that new condition if the new business operator were coming in. Yeah, I, th I believe I follow you. Yeah, so if there is a change, then it would take a real look. It would, whatever motion happens, it would get relooked if there was a change in practice anyways. Yeah, we could certainly bring that back yeah. to the commission. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. I'd also like to specify that condition number 25 under the development plan um, calls for outdoor speakers are not permitted as part of this entitlement approval. So should there be any modifications to that, it would trigger amendments to these set of conditions, which would then trigger staff to review any noise impacts that's associated with that speaker use. So I'm just thinking of another, you know, possibility that could exist out there, uh, which with the traffic side of it, okay, let's say you don't put in a speaker, but you also don't have a person. So what's the other option that you have to order through an app, uh, through an application? And so that now becomes the, the standard way of doing business. And I'm not saying that that would happen, but that's a, that's a realistic possibility. So it goes back to the stacking issue. Is that is that um, going to make things a little bit more complex and cause you know more people to now you know text and drive or figure what their order is? It's going to back things up because people might not be as efficient with it, right? Um, so the people side of it seems to be always the the better option, and which is why I like this business model. I just want to make sure that it's the I don't care about the. I don't want to get into the weeds with that. I, could, I personally, I care more about the stacking and the slowdown of traffic and getting out onto Clinton Keith. Commissioner Vrooman, good point. Because when you pull up to a fast food restaurant, they say, "Are you ordering your, with your app today?" Correct. And that's a quick move in that McDonald's and a lot of larger providers, because that is how they'll shrink their time. Correct. So most people are leaning towards the app, and that will be a more efficiency metric, in my opinion. Is that you're ordering at could your be. office? Could be if you're yeah. efficient using yeah. the app. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that's the trend is they're pushing so that they can minimize the time frame between ordering and pickup. And that's why the apps are being pushed so hard by that. That will create um, less time and more customers. Correct. Commissioner Wojciech, did you have a question? No. No? Okay. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the public testimony. And the, uh, we're going to open it up at 7.14 p.m. And Madam Secretary, do we have any public comments starting with proponents, then opponents, and then those that are neutral in that order? We have one in opposition, Brandy Easley. 
If you could step to the podium and identify yourself and where you're from. Hi, good evening, gentlemen. My name is Brandi Easley, and I actually reside um, right behind Sarah Lane. My condo actually faces the dirt lot that is proposed, uh, parcel one and two. And um, I have my concerns. Um, there is quite an abundance of safety concerns I have. One of them is the gas station. Uh, 0.2 miles away, just across, that wasn't pictured in there. There's an elementary school called Antelope Hills Elementary. And there's actually about more than 70 children that actually walk from my neighborhood and the neighborhoods adjacent to me and the apartments where they have to cross the street. So I'm really concerned about the heavy traffic if there's a gas station. Um, they walk alone and there's so many of them, they actually have a crossing guard to help to make sure that they cross Clinton Key safely. So it's really close by 0.2 miles. And the next one is I do see high school students walking from my location around there, going to the high school at 7 a.m. and at 3 p.m. coming home. So there are high school students. There's also uh, littering on Sierra Lane. I've had to call law enforcement because um, my walls are thin. Well, when the walls are thin, the windows, you can hear everything on Sierra Lane. So I've had to call law enforcement because of littering of alcohol beverages, um, camping, and illegal drug use. So I'm concerned that if we have the gas station, it's just gonna make it worse. And then the noise level I am concerned about because like I mentioned, our walls are thin, windows, we can hear everything on Sierra Lane. So if there's gonna be a car wash, um, that's gonna be really loud and all my bedrooms face the dirt lot. So I'm worried about the lighting and the noise. Also, there's a car wash being built next to this proposed um, gas station. It, there's a childcare center and then a full service car wash. So I don't know why we need two car washes in the same vicinity. So just concerned about that. So, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Uh, any proponents? Seeing none. And that was a uh, an opponent. Are there any more? Seeing none. And are there any neutral public comments? No, not at this time. Okay. I'm then going to close the public <laughs> close public comments at 718 and get a new phone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, would the developer uh, want to rebuttal? And if so, you would have a 10 minute time frame, if you wish. No? Okay. Thank you. All right. We're going to discuss and debate the matter until there appears to be a consensus or the debate ends uh, with regarding to calling for a motion. Uh, and uh, I'll start with any comments you have up here. Commissioner I, Harlan, uh, Vice Chair Carlin. Oh, I, I was going to say, I have no comments. No comments? I, I have the, the just the same two concerns um, that I'd like to see in the eventual uh, motion. Uh, somehow worded, um, I can either make the motion or whatever, but having those two uh, additional conditions of approval of just a minimum of two people uh, at the Circle K, or at the convenience store. I don't care if they're stocking shelves or whatever they're doing, just having two people uh, on duty at any given time uh, as what what they presented. And the same thing with the, uh, the drive-through uh, for the uh, Dutch Brothers. Correct me if I'm wrong, I thought Ferris said item 25 in the conditions of approval said no speakers. Wouldn't that take care of that issue? Which is what I, which is what I thought I heard. You, well, it's, you, it's, yeah, if I could chime in there. So it says no speakers. It doesn't say a person has to be there to take the order, which I think that's what Commissioner Ruin was getting at. So, so, so then the, that, other, the only other option out there is, okay, we don't put a person out there. You can't have a speaker. 
So then it forces everyone to, to go on the app. That would be the next generation, if you will. Or order so, at the window. Or order at the window uh, type of thing. And with the traffic and the stacking, are we satisfied with that as a, as a future? Or do we put in, at this point in time, since you can't have a speaker, it has to be a live person, which is what they're doing. So it wouldn't be any different than what they presented to us. So that's the... What do you think? I, don't, I think the, the fact that they can't have a speaker probably is going to take care of the issue. I think it's moot. Um, you, you have to come up to the speaker, please. And be recognized. Uh, you have to be recognized sorry. again. John, sorry. John Caglia, Dutch Bros. I do have a question about the speakers because I do see that condition in a lot of cities with our stores under development. That applies to music speakers, not drive through speakers. It's speakers in general under conditions of approval. So yeah. the noise, the way the noise analysis was um, was done, it accounted for no outdoor speakers because that was our primary concern. With as Jarrett mentioned, some of the neighbors complaining about the the call box and speaker adjacent to your site. So okay. that that was one of our analysis that was evaluated in the noise study, okay. and therefore it landed on the conditions okay. of approval. We would also just, you know, we do take orders at the windows when there's limited, you know, cars off here. If it's only one, two cars, they drive up to the window and take the orders there, so. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I think it, I think the non-speaker issue makes that point moot um, because uh, if, you know, it's a noise issue, right? That's what mm -hmm. it comes right. down to. Noise and traffic. I can't think yeah. of an alternative that would increase that if, whether you have an employee out there or you use an app or you do it at the window, who knows what the future will bring. Maybe there's a robot out there. I have yeah, no idea, right, but exactly. yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think we're covered, but that's just my feeling. Well, I think Jared, Jared brought up a great point, right? Because we've, we've heard from neighbors, right, that have heard, hey, I can hear people ordering jumbo jacks, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we had the best laid plans that that wouldn't happen, and yet reality is it's there. You know, when you look at you're running a business and some of the different things and the challenges that come up here, right? I mean, the whole idea is to sell coffee and sell a lot of it, right? So if it's if the, if it's busy, and I think it will be, um, and we have something in verbiage there for no speakers, I kind of agree with Mr. Wojcik. I think we're covered on that base. And the fact if you're busy, you're going to want to get those cars through because then you can get more cars. That's when you can have somebody out there with an iPad taking those, taking those orders like you see it. Mm -hmm. You see it in and out, Starbucks and things like that. I, I think that, from my point, looks like it's going to take care of itself. I hear you. But I, yeah. From what I, what I hear, it feels like it's going to take care of itself. And, Commissioner, are, are you speaking on just just on the fact of the uh, drive through or, like, inside the coffee shop as well? Or are we just talking about the drive through I think it's the drive through and then from what I heard, it's a walk-up order at the window. There's no seating inside. There may be a couple chairs outside, perhaps, but I it sounds like if you're a walk up, you're ordering and go, right? Yeah, and, and I think is the hours of operation will be to 11 at night from 5 a.m. That's a long time period. That would be the, probably the longest hours on that side of the street. And so we just want to be careful because our code enforcement has a lot of complaints that come to us. This could be one less one that we would deal with in the future. So that's why I brought it up. But um, whatever the planning commission will decide. So I think the five to the 11 was just two nights a week. Yeah, but those are busy nights. Yeah. I think my feeling is is that <clears throat> we have to let them operate the best way that they know how. I think that you're adding payroll cost to the business uh, that reduces the profitability. And I'm not in favor of that. I'm in favor of uh, business having their business model, running it smoothly, running it per all of the requirements they have, and making the profit that they need to make to stay in business for that 10-year lease. No, and that's not, my, in, that's not my intention is, is payroll. I could care less about that. Well, it, adding two people when only one person is their model is at increasing payroll. Which business are you talking about? Coffee Brothers. Or no, I, I was only saying what they brought forward to us was having one person taking drive through orders, not two. And it, and it really came down to an efficiency of getting people through the through the drive through and prevent the stacking. And my issue is that, okay, if they present something, hey, this is the business model, but then after approval, they change it. 
But I think I, I do I do think that having the um, no speakers, meaning no drive-through speakers, if that's inclusive, then that takes care of the noise issue, and then also, you know, the, it would incentivize them to have somebody out there during during the peak hours. The two employees is more on the convenience store side. I think we'd be remiss as well, right, when uh, with some of the public comments that we've seen and heard, right, is that, you know, as Jared um, a lot alluded to, kind of some public visibility, you know, our role is not necessarily the business type, but just does this particular project fall mm -hmm. in with the particular zoning and general plan is the criteria that, that we're asked to, to look at, right? Not necessarily is this a duplicate business in a particular area, right? Right. right. So that's that's basically our task. Does it hit the zoning designation and the general plan? Right. And, but to your comment about duplicate business, we approved a gas station convenience store almost across the street, Kitty Corner. Mm -hmm. When we did that approval, didn't we require two employees there? That was a proposal within their security plan, and you did approve two employees at a minimum at That's all hours. Right. And that was a customer who preferred that because he didn't want any employee alone at night. He just said, but it was also where he said that's when they clean and stock. That's an yeah. efficiency for them. I, I think, though, if, if, and we made that as a condition. And obviously, the owner-operator agreed with that condition for their own safety issues. They did. I, I would think that we would need to be somewhat consistent. Um, I mean, it's literally almost across the street. And if we mandated two there, we should mandate two here. So that's just my comment on that. I thought the operator has said that he is going to have two people in the convenience store at all hours. But but they could change that the day they open and say, eh, right. we don't really want to do that. We, we brought forward to the commission. We told them this is what we plan on doing. We approve it under those beliefs. And the reality of it is, is they could say, eh, we don't have to do it. I might refer to Farah. Is there anything in the conditions of approval that mandates two people at the convenience store all the hours of operation? No, there, there is no specific uh, condition that alludes to requiring two employees. However, I'd like to point out that the operational statement, which is a part of the resolution that you folks are adopting, um, if this project does move forward, identifies written, a written statement from the applicant that there will be two employees at any given time. Right. It's a statement that they provided to staff as well as the decision makers for consideration, and that's a written statement from for how they're going to operate their business. I thought I saw that. That's why I was questioning it. Yes, it's it would be an um, exhibit uh, G of the staff report. That's coming from the operator, right? So, is that binding if they a year later decide to pull one off, or do we need to make it binding by including that in our motion? If they changed owners. Or even if they don't change owners, let's say right. they just say we want to put one in. I think that's a question for the city attorney if that's binding. Yes, <laughs> thank you. So, thanks. Uh, I think you have two issues going on, and I think you're, you're kind of letting you debate, and I wanted to see where it was going before I chimed in because it may have become irrelevant. Um, with respect to the convenience store, if you're looking at a safety and security issue and you want uh, mm -hmm. that use as a convenience store, regardless of operator, to always have two employees uh, on premises at all times, you would need to add that as condition of approval for that to be enforceable at a later date. With respect to the uh, coffee shop use, um, if your concerns are noise, we've already addressed that there's the no speaker rule. Um, placing the restriction that they had to operate in a very specific manner of uh, having an employee outside to take orders at all times, I think would be very, very difficult. Um, they, because you know you're now you're now mandating that somebody be out there when there's nobody in the queue, and it's pouring rain or it's mm -hmm. 120 degrees, and somebody still has to be out there. Um, the the mandate should be to prevent a certain harm or to address a specific need. So if um, you know if the issue is noise, we've addressed that in one way. If the uh, issue is queuing, um, you could have a, a condition that says that. Anytime there's more than X number of cars in the queue, they need to have 
you know, address it in this way. But um, I think a blanket, uh, a blanket mandate rather than a restriction uh, in a condition of approval would be very, very difficult to uh, not only to word but into it to enforce at a later time. So I think they're different. Mm -hmm. Okay, any more debate? And is there a motion that wants to be placed on? And can you bring up the, uh, where are we at here? I'll go ahead and make the motion, and I think, Mr. Steele, if you'd, if you'd like to sure. read it, and with the caveat of one additional condition of approval for two employees at the convenience store during hours of operation. Sure, so I can read the recommendation. Um, staff recommends that the Planning Commission consider and approve an amend addendum to the previous initial study and mitigated negative declaration that was prepared for the project in compliance with Section 15164 of the California Environmental Quality Act and adopt the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Marietta approving development plan permit 2021-2466, tentative parcel map TPM 2021-2468, phasing plan PHS 2021-2470, conditional use permit 2021-2467, and conditional use permit 2021-2469 for the construction and phasing of a convenience store with beer and wine sales, service station, and express car wash on parcel one, and a drive through coffee shop on parcel two, and a commercial subdivision of one parcel into three parcels located at the northeast corner of Mitchell Road and Clinton Keith Road. Based on the findings and subject to the conditions of approval in exhibits A through E and operation statement in exhibit F and G, and with the motion by Commissioner Ruman starting at the beginning. Is there a motion? Yes, with the motion that Ruman, uh, Mr. Commissioner Ruman started with, which two, requires two employees at all times in the uh, Circle K convenience store. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Madam Secretary, can we take a vote on it? My computer is not working. Chair Fisher. Yes. Vice Chair Harlan. Aye. Commissioner Ruman. Aye. Commissioner Wojciech. Aye. Commissioner LaPaglia. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Do we have any comments from the city planner? Yeah, uh, Chair, thank you very much. Just want to mention the Planning Commission has rendered a decision on the project tonight. Um, the decision is appealable. Anyone wishing from the public wishing to file an appeal can contact me, the city planner here at City Hall or come to the planning counter here across the hall uh, during normal business hours to file an appeal. Thank you, Chair. Back to you. Uh, city Attorney comments? None, thank you. Planning Commission, any comments? Nope. Good to see everyone again. If everybody uh, is in agreement then, uh, I would like to uh, call for adjournment. Are we inconsistent uh, in Congruent with that at 733. Yes. No, I think we should stay longer. It's closed. Adjournment. <laughs>